Greetings from Tokyo, my dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope you are all having a very nice, nice day today. I would like to address a viewer question, if I may. It's a really nice question from a viewer whose name is Roman Haverstock. So, Roman, hello, how are you? I hope you're doing very well. You had asked me some time back about what I felt about the works of Steven Spielberg. So the film director whose name is Steven Spielberg, the American film director. And so you asked me what I thought of the works of Steven Spielberg, the Steven Spielberg films. So I would, and of course I'd like to uh, ask the question of you all are watching. So what do you think of the films of Steven Spielberg? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Are there any p films in particular that you enjoy? Uh, are there some favorites of yours, etc.? Please feel free to leave comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. As for me, I really like the works of Steven Spielberg. I must have been, I haven't seen all of his films I am in particular not so good with his very, very recent stuff. So I haven't seen films like, oh gosh, like uh, the BFG, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Ready Player One. I haven't seen um, the, the Post, is that right, The Post? Um, and so, uh, I haven't seen and other films so I haven't seen his recent stuff so I'm actually not so good with modern Spielberg let's put it that way I know of Spielberg's works growing up so I'm now 40 I was born in 1979 so I was growing up in the 80s and so Spielberg films were the thing for me and I was growing up and this was around the time of Indiana Jones um, this was also oh gosh uh, as for Spielberg films of course there was VHS so I would rent films or my parents would rent films for me and so I'd be able to watch uh, films like Jaws Close Encounters of the Third Kind and I was growing older Jurassic Park and so these big blockbuster films uh, were uh, basically part of my childhood and adolescence. And they were a really happy part of my childhood. And so as a result, I'm, I have a great affinity for these early works of Spielberg. In particular, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Jaws. I find these two films in particular to be extraordinary. Raiders of the Lost Ark in particular I find to be an extraordinary work. It's really quite remarkable just how that narrative unfolds at such a uh, uh, breathless pace. And even if, the way, I don't want to spoil it, but even the way it ends is actually quite remarkable in that it seems to go actually against expectation rather than with expectation. It seems to go against certain uh, genre expectations, which I find quite fascinating, but maybe I'll leave that for another day. As for Jaws, I find this to be one of the most thrilling examples of kind of uh, homemade horror film. I mean, it's a, it's a horror film and it's an action film that feels so homemade and you can feel the nuts and bolts of it, if you know what I mean. You can feel the 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 way in which it seems to be sort of haphazardly put together but that's the the trick right because jaws is in fact an expertly woven tale that is so it, it it's it's amazing just how much of a genius <laughs> spielberg is at this particular moment in his life very young at the time when he made jaws and it's just a, a remarkable feat it ages so well. I'm amazed at how well that film has aged. It feels still to this day oh so fresh. Quite amazing. So 
those are the two films in particular for me that I think resonate with me the, the strongest. Then there, of course, there are other films that he has done, and granted, his filmography is quite vast, so I'm not going to be able to go through all of his films, but uh, I, I do like Jurassic Park, although I must admit that I think Jurassic Park is uh, a film that I think I just missed in terms of my own growing up. And it, it, I think had I been born maybe a few years later, I think Jurassic Park would, would have been one of the key films for me. It's still a great film, don't get me wrong. I saw it in the theater, and I remember still to this day when I first saw that first trailer for Jurassic Park, I, I remember it quite vividly. They never showed a full dinosaur in that first trailer. They were very careful to show just just shots of the, the foot or or the the dinosaur opening the door, but they never saw showed a full uh, full shot of a dinosaur, which I thought was a great teaser. And they used the the music from Backdraft, right? The the you know the film Backdraft, the Ron Howard film. Well, they used that music, you know, the dun 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 that that music. They used that music for the trailer, which I thought was very effective. It was very cool. One of the great trailers, and. Uh, so that got me very excited. So yes, Jurassic Park was an event film, and I went to see it in the theater, and it was amazing, really amazing. But but I must admit that it it hasn't stuck with me as uh, as as stubbornly, perhaps, as a film like say Jaws or Raiders of the Lost Ark has. I mean, those two films I think will never leave me. But Jurassic Park is still a, a very good film. And as for his, let's say, more dramatic works, I did grow up and I did see films like The Color Purple. And I did see films like Empire of the Sun. Now, I I saw Empire of the Sun in the movie theater, actually, when I was young. My parents took me and it was quite a... a, I, I find that film to be one that, well, I haven't revisited it in a long time, so maybe I should watch it again, but it's a film that is, I I think, quite a complicated one from my point of view. I find it to be also very, uh, very effective, at least I remember feeling uh, very moved emotionally by the film. It was a very effective film. I uh, really should see it again, though, just to see how I might f- react to it now that I'm a little bit older. And there are films like uh, Schindler's List as well. Now, I, I, I find Schindler's List to be a a very difficult watch, but an incredibly important one. Now, I remember that time when Schindler's List was released in the theaters. And I remember it was such a, a uh, it, it, it was so valuable for me because I was still, I was still in high school, I think. But the release of that film, Schindler's List, in theaters, uh, pr- encouraged and prompted all this uh, information to become available and to become in the spotlight, if you will, regarding the Holocaust and Holocaust studies. And I remember this quite vividly. And so I think that uh, there are aspects of the film that I think are worth discussing and even criticizing. And I'm talking about it in terms of a, a, an artistic depiction of these particular specific events relating to the Holocaust. Okay, I still think it's a quite a powerful work, don't get me wrong. But uh, regardless of whatever uh, minor criticisms I, I might have with respect to the the work as an artistic depiction of particular aspects of 20th century history, I think that the film is undeniably quite powerful in what it is trying to convey and also with what it has engendered in terms of making... Uh, or shedding light on Holocaust studies to a wider audience, at least at the time during its release, and and it was undeniable, which is, I think, a great benefit. Uh, 
So, and I haven't, of course, I, I'm not a sociologist, so I, I don't necessarily know and I haven't studied the, the, uh, you know, the cultural and sociological impact of Schindler's List and the, the uh, uh, making aware uh, the importance of Holocaust studies to a broader audience. I don't know the sociological impact of this, but at least from my own personal experience, I do remember that there was a lot of, of um, uh, how should I put it, uh, there were a lot more discussions, at least in my classes, my high school classes, about the Holocaust, and there were more um, opportunities for listening to other interviews. And uh, Steven Spielberg himself, I think he was very much uh, supportive and a proponent of making available, uh, you know, background information about the Holocaust and making it widely known uh, to the extent possible, of course. So this is, I think, uh, speaking to uh, a, a much bigger thing. Uh, and so I think on that basis, I think a film like Schindler's List is incredibly important. And so uh, I, I admire the work very much. But of course, I can uh, maybe I'll leave that to another day to discuss the specifics of that particular film because I, I do think it's it's a very uh, it's a work that is one that I think is is worth talking about uh, in more detail than I'm affording it now. But anyway, uh, that's another example of a Steven Spielberg work. And then I think. The as the films progress throughout his later career, I, I tend to drop off a little bit, and I I don't know I I'm not necessarily as into his works uh, later in his career than I was earlier in his career, and I'm not sure quite why that is, but well maybe I do. I think it's just because I don't necessarily find them uh, that compelling that I need to watch them immediately, let me put it that way. So I don't feel the need necessarily to go out and watch the Spielberg film uh, as soon as it is released. So who knows, maybe that might change in the future, I'm not sure, but for me right now, it's, it's, I'm okay right now as, uh, as I am and as I understand Spielberg's works to be and how they have affected my life. And as I say, I will always fall back on his earlier works, which I find to be his truly iconic stuff, and in particular Jaws and Raiders of the Lost Ark. I think those two films are undeniable in terms of their, <laughs> of their cultural impact. My goodness. You know, I, I did see the film also Hook. Do you remember Hook? I did see that in the theater, and I was a little bit disappointed by that. I found that to be a little bit, uh, a little bit odd in many places. But I do remember enjoying Robin Williams' performance very much. That was really great. But uh, yeah, there was Hook. Uh, but even thinking about Hook, I'll still uh, rely on Jaws and Raiders of the Lost Ark. So. But anyway, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a Spielberg expert per se, but uh, uh, I know those of you out there who are very strong, ardent fans of Steven Spielberg, you probably have much more to say than I, and you might even find my comments to be somewhat lacking and incomplete. If that's the case, I, I deeply apologize. It's not my intent to, to appear that way, but... Again, it's just, uh, you know, I, I would say that I'm, I like Steven Spielberg's works, but I don't necessarily feel, at the moment anyway, that I need to rush out and watch every single of his new releases on opening day. Let me put it that way. So, uh, but hopefully that might change in the future. Who knows? Uh, we shall see, of course, because it seems that uh, Mr. Spielberg is still filled with a lot of energy and a lot of life, and so hopefully he will make a lot of movies uh, in the future. So uh, I certainly hope so, because he is definitely an, a, a voice to uh, listen to and, and uh, a force to be reckoned with. So yes, so that's my take on Steven Spielberg films. So I hope that answers the question. I, I hope so, Roman. If not, I sincerely apologize. And once again, let me repeat that I, of course, 
extend the question to you and how do you feel about the works of Steven Spielberg, please feel free to leave thoughts and comments down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay, my friends, uh, that's it for now. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Until we meet again, my friends. Cheers.